we have hit little league all the way up to the big leagues and you can't have a review of indiana baseball without picking up american legion so i am glad to have with us a uh the uh, head guy for one of the probably the best uh perennial programs and definitely a powerhouse program throughout the state in american legion baseball i'm glad to have with us our guest tim hayes who is the manager of wayne newton post 346 out of Terre Haute? mr hayes i'm glad to have you with us sir good to be with you dan thank you you're quite welcome by and i'll start with the outright by saying i like that lid you got on you know anybody that uh, follows me on twitter knows my uh, current projects to get all the high schools and colleges and a lot of people ask me where are you going next, hat guy? There's a lot of programs out there, and I, I think I'm talking to one of them right now. Is uh, Mr. Hayes? I'm going to make my trip over to Terre Haute and get the uh, required selfie and pick up one of those nice Terre Haute Wayne Newton American Legion hats here soon. <laughs> you stop by the office. I'll take you back to the post 346 baseball war room, and we'll get you fitted. Well, that uh, that would be my pleasure. I tell you, you know, I said the uh, Wayne Newton program. You know, I'm from that area, West Central Indiana, Terre Haute area just a powerhouse program. I mean that you guys have had, I was looking at some stats on your website. You've got uh, 14 time plus back to back American Legion state champion. You guys pull from some great baseball schools in their individual right. You've got Terre Haute North, Terre Haute South, West Vigo. So to start with, let's, let's look at the makeup of your American Legion program. You were mentioning while we were talking offline, something about this base school process for how American Legion forms its team. So give us a makeup of the uh, Wayne Newton Post 346 team and how that base school process works. Well, as we discussed, you know, every youth program, uh, and when I say youth program, everything from, you know, Little League, whether you're talking about Little League, Cal Ripken, Pony, Babe Ruth, you know, all of course, Cal Ripken and Babe Ruth are all under the auspices of Babe Ruth, but <clears throat> those programs all the way up through the ranks with, the oldest of a youth program would be American Legion Baseball. It's all based on geography and boundaries. And uh, why? Because it's community-based baseball. We, and we talked about travel ball, and that's the difference. Travel ball is not necessarily community-based. It can be, but it's not required to be, so to speak. Um, so with uh, American Legion Baseball, what you have is uh, each team declares a, uh, a base school. So you have to be affiliated with a base high school. Mm -hmm. our, our base school is Terre Haute North. And when the program, when I was in high school, you had uh, post 346, uh, Wayne Newton, and then you had post 104, Cretenstein. Mm -hmm. And I think Cretenstein had the kids from the south end of the county and 346 had the north end of the county and Cretenstein folded. So then American Legion uh, post 346 folded for a couple of years. And then my brother revived it in the mid 80s. Uh, and for a couple of years, a few years, he only took kids from North and then he decided he really would be better off to take kids from, you know, the whole County. And so he started taking kids from, uh, you know, South and then West Vigo. And so, um, when anybody that's in your base school is eligible to play for you, no matter where they live, I mean, I could have a kid that lived, you know, in Greencastle, his parents do, but if he goes to North, that he can play for post 346 because that's our base school. If a kid does not attend your base school, he can play for us as long as he lives closer to Terre Haute North. Mm -hmm. Now that's determined by putting the, the address of Terre Haute North and the kid's address in MapQuest. Mm -hmm. He has to live closer to Terre Haute North than any other base school of another program. Okay, so, so like you've got other posts you were, you were mentioned. I think you've got some, uh, what, what would be some like surrounding uh, posts that have teams right there around Terre Haute? Uh, Sullivan, mm -hmm. um, uh, Clay County, which is, you know, Brazil area. Yep. Uh, last year, Rockville didn't have a team, but they have in, in most years, in recent years, and have had some really good teams. Mm -hmm. um, Clinton. Clinton's had a, a team for the last uh, several years, as long as I can remember. Mm -hmm. um, off and on Green County, but uh, not not within the last couple of years. Right. Um, One of the things you mentioned that's that's kind of why I love Legion Ball, because it's a, it's a I, I, it's it's a hybrid really. I, I consider it travel ball 
but it's it's the best of both worlds because it's local. It is a local league, so you got local guys, but you're playing people all over the state. Um, and and you know maybe leading into that, let's let's talk about your schedule. And you know over the years, you know who are some of the teams you're playing? Not only in Indiana, but across you know Illinois, and who are some of the power programs that uh, that Wayne Newton? You know you're definitely one of them. Who's who's some of your competition around the the state in the Midwest? Well, um, let's t- start with the state of Indiana. Um, we, and I don't want to talk, I, I want to, before I get into that, I want to talk about something that you kind of mentioned tangentially there, but when you're in your introductory re- remarks, I want to say a couple things. Number one, state of Indiana is known for basketball, <laughs> basketball talent, but the state of Indiana has produced per capita, probably as good a baseball town as you're going to find out of any state. We, we in Indiana, uh, and particularly West Central Indiana, I, w- I want to talk about Indiana first, but in West Central Indiana, you know as well as I know, there have been lots and lots of good baseball players. West Central Indiana is fertile ground for really good baseball players. And I think that's because the strength of the youth programs around here, dating back all the way to the Terre Haute Americans and Terre Haute Nationals at, at a ballpark that no longer exists, 16th and Chase. But then, of course, North Little League and, and, and places like that. Um, this area has produced some really, really good baseball players and yeah, continues to do so. So, so, it, and it, so our, our main competition in Indiana are, are communities similar to ours that have continued to, to produce really good baseball players. But for Legion Ball to exist in those programs, you have to have somebody that's kind of a, a, a constant in terms of running the program. Mm-hmm. You can't, it can't be passed from coach to coach to coach to coach every year because what happens is it, it's, it's way different than it used to be uh, for many reasons. But, uh, and I can talk about that in a little bit of funding and, and, and things, but uh, it's not as easy as the old days where you just call it the Legion and say, hey, we need money in the account. It doesn't work that way most places any longer. And that's some of the reason that some of these Legion baseball programs have died out is not necessarily because of competition from travel ball or whatever, but sometimes that's true, but sometimes it's because they, they don't have the money. Um, but anyway, the, what I would call the perennial powerhouses and our main competition um, year in, year out. And it's changed a little bit, even since I've been involved, but uh, for me, you know, those, those would be, Places like Rockport, Newburgh, Kokomo, Lafayette. Um, uh, gosh, I don't want to. I don't want to fail to mention anybody. Last year in the state finals, we had Valparaiso, which teams from up in that region area kind of come and go. And and the the team from Valparaiso last year was really good. I mean, they they had us on the ropes in the state tournament. We ended up coming back and winning. But um, you know, Bristol has had a program for a really long time up around the which is Elkhart. Uh, Anderson kind of comes and goes, you know, uh, in, ter- in terms of uh, teams, you know, and things. But, but those ones that have been constants, uh, the the top level constant teams, I would have to say, uh, Newburgh, Rockport. Also uh, down southern Indiana is uh, uh, Floyd's Knobs. Mm-hmm. So the New Albany area yeah. has, has been a good program down there, too, for a while. Uh, but like I said, Kokomo, Lafayette, those are teams that year in, year out th- that I know are going to be there. And, and you know, pr- when it gets to the state finals, you're, that's who you're going to see. Well, and the, just hearing that list from you, you know, I could probably overlay that list with uh, powerhouse Little League programs over the years. You know, it's just, you know, the strong communities that pull together and, and keep those teams active. You know, it, it carries on. It carries from Little League on up to American Legion. And, and, you know, another good thing that you mentioned, just to kind of reiterate, you know, you do pull from three schools and um, some people not too privy to American Legion would think, well, that kind of gives you an unfair advantage, but that's not the case because the Kokomos, the Lafayettes, I mean, they're pulling from mo- multiple schools as well. So, I mean, it's, that's, and to me, that makes the level of play in American Legion, especially when you get to that state finals, you want to see a good state finals watch the American Legion state finals. Cause you're talking teams like Wayne Newton who pulls from three great individual programs playing other 
American Legion teams like the Lafayettes, like the new version of teams that you were mentioning that were pulling from other uh, multi-school, individually talented teams. So it makes for some a really a high level of baseball that I, I truly love. So well, you know, go ahead. Your teams like Newburgh, I mean, and, and of course, uh, Rockport. I mean, that Evansville area, you talk about mm-hmm. an area down there that's, you know, blessed with lots of good baseball talent. In the Newburgh, you're getting the Newburgh kids and you're getting some kids from Evansville. You know, the I'm not sure I don't want to get into naming high schools because I'm not positive, but I think maybe uh, I'm not sure which which one of those the Evansville schools actually flows into Newburgh, uh, you know, besides the Newburgh school itself. But, you know, good baseball down there. Of course, there's Evansville Funkhauser down there uh, that also and for the longest time, Evansville Pate was a was was one of those powerhouses that would have been mentioned, but they've kind of. Um, you know, fallen by the wayside here the last few years. I'm not quite sure, you know, what happened. I think there was a, maybe a change in leadership, but you know, these programs like Rockport, those guys that are the Rockport coaches, they've been coaching that team for over 50 years. Yeah. And then the guys that involved, uh, you know, in Kokomo, you know, Don Andrews been, he's been that coach for a long time. And, and Dan Yeoman at Lafayette has been involved there a long time. Um, the Newburgh guys or the, the Rockport guys, uh, you know, uh, Bobby uh, uh, Snyder and, Coach, Coach Jim Hoff down there. They've, they've just been involved, like I said, for over 50 years. And, you know, they're even getting some kids that, that have come over from Owensboro and play for for uh, for their program. And that's within the rules as long as you get the consent of the state commissioners. But so, you know, they draw, they draw from like, uh, whereas we draw from three pretty decent high schools, Rockport draws from eight or nine small schools, but still eight or nine varsity programs. And so, uh, you know, you can always you can always plan on those guys being pretty good. You know, there's a I, I'm putting myself in the shoes of a high school coach right now. They they I'm sure they would all agree with me and say, well, that'd be a pretty good problem to have. But then on the same, you, you flip the coin right there, and I'm just thinking of you looking at Terre Haute North, Terre Haute South, and West Vigo, and it's got to be pretty difficult to filter down to a team of 15 right there because you know you you're you're probably going to have to make some thankless decisions there. Uh, to to fill, put your team down to 15 and and not allow a kid on the team that's a good player. Well, and as we talked about before we started the interview, things have changed quite a bit. My brother had this team for 31 years, and this summer will be my fifth, so it'll be 36 years that our family's been in charge of this program. And some years back when I was coaching the junior legion, my brother had the senior legion. I said, John, I'm going to pick the junior legion in the fall. And he was against it. Uh, he said, you got to, got to see him play in the spring because he, he never picked his team until May. Mm-hmm. And I told him at one point, you know, I said, look, if you don't pick, start picking your guys, you know, you want, if you don't start inviting them in the fall, they're going to commit somewhere else because they have no idea whether you're going to call them in May or not. Yeah. Back before there was so much competition for players, Kids, high school kids would sit around with bated breath waiting for Coach John Hayes to call them in, in April or May and invite them on the Legion team. Well, you can't do that anymore. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, we, I mean, I'll, I'll get people checking in with me, asking me about, you know, next year. We had people the last two years checking in with me about next year's team, and we're still playing. We're not done yet. Yeah. Some of these travel programs, they'll be done playing about the third week of July, you know, and, and, so I start getting these emails and texts and calls and we're still playing. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I don't start doing anything about picking a team for the following summer until at least we're done playing, mm-hmm. you know, now if there's a kid that's a no brainer that, you know, you want, and they, you know, they, they get in touch with you or the high school coach tells you about him and I can say, Hey coach, tell him he's got a spot next year. Be glad to have him. Mm-hmm. But you know, we don't, we don't conduct. I know a lot, I follow a lot of the Legion programs on Twitter and a lot of those programs will conduct tryouts and, we really don't. We, I, I find that the source of uh, knowledge as, as far as who to take, you know, the high school coaches, number one, I, I try to talk to all the high school coaches, say, who do you have? Do you recommend for me? But I'll tell you what else I do. I talk to the players, your current players. You got a kid that's a junior and I'll say, Hey, who, who, you know, those, those current players, they know who on their varsity roster is a good player, but they also know who, what kid you might want to stay away from because this is a problem. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, maybe he's not a good teammate and, uh, you know, maybe he's, if he's not in the starting lineup, he's going to be a powder all day long, you know, 
like I said, we'll have 15 guys next year. So having one of those guys in the dugout is not productive. So I rely heavily on my current players to, to give me some tips as far as who I want for the following summer. And it's worked out pretty well that way. Well, that's a, that's another dynamic, just, you know, thinking about how you said that. And, you know, when you've got, in your case, you've got kids from three different schools on the same team, that, that leads to a great dynamic and I'm sure some great dugout chatter, to be honest with you, because these guys are playing against each other in a very competitive part of the state right there with, you know, West Vigo and Terre Haute North and Terre Haute South beating each other up all year. Then they, you know, the, the, the stars from those teams come together and form this powerhouse team every year. That's just, that's just got to be a great environment and a great experience for the kids and the, the coaches in the community to put together a team like that every year is, uh, is fun to watch. And you guys certainly have, you know, as we kind of migrate into uh, talking about last year, the 2019 season, um, you said you, uh, you, you put something on the Wayne Newton resume there that uh, I don't think you said has ever been done with uh, the juniors and the seniors both taking home the championship. Is that right? I, I wouldn't say it's never been done. It hasn't been uh, done in, in recent years that I knew of, but, uh, and we were able to accomplish that. Now, in, in full disclosure, it's, it's a little different now to, to say, well, we want them both compared to years past. I mean, even when my older son, Jacob, was playing, I coached the Junior Legion uh, with along with the two of my friends, Mike Everly and Steve Pilpovich. And uh, uh, there were a lot more Junior Legion teams then in Indiana than there are now. And so no matter how good you are, how good you think you are, the more teams that there are, mathematically, the harder it is to win, you know, any tournament. And so, um, and that's true with the senior uh, team as well. I mean, uh, we did go back to back for the first time since 69 and 70. But like I say, full disclosure, uh, I'd have to say that the 69-70 feet might be better than, you know, the 2018-2019 feet because there were probably twice as many Legion teams in Indiana in 69-70 than there are now, maybe three times as many teams. Uh, so I felt pretty good about going back to back 19, 18 and 19. But uh, wow, amazing when you think about 69-70. If you had a, if you had a way to know exactly how many teams there were back then lots more teams and uh so that was really an impressive group and i've i've been in contact with a guy that was on both of those teams who used to be my neighbor here and i saw his name in an article that he was on that team and I had to run into him at a wedding and uh, rich foley and so hopefully rich will run across this interview someday on, on your site but um and then he later sent me a um something that they gave him a photograph of the team and different a little a little booklet memento he sent uh, one for the 69 championship and one for the 70 championship of the team. And I'm, we're going to put that on our website. I think it's pretty special. Yeah, that is, it, absolutely it is. And, you know, take, take me to, uh, because, okay, so we have, we have less teams. And, and uh, I'll, 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 I'll give you the fact that, you know, getting to that final four may be a, a, a shorter road than it was in the past. But that final four with teams like Wayne Newton pulling from three powerhouse schools, I think the Vincennes and some Lafayette, the Lafayette team was in there too. Uh, take me in the final four and lead me up to the championship. You know, start by for those that, uh, that don't follow Legion ball, um, you know, where was the, the final four in the championship at? So take me through those games and uh, let's talk about, you know, the regional after that, the level of competition you played after you won the state and uh, take me through that experience this year. Well, my brother told me, uh, well, first of all, the, your, your state finals, there are eight teams. Mm -hmm. It's either eight or nine. I'd have to look at the bracket because the host gets in. Uh, I can't recall if it's eight or nine teams. I think it's an eight-team bracket, though. Um, last year, I'm not sure I can name them all, but Kokomo, Lafayette, um, Valparaiso. Um, the host was uh, Rockport. Um, one of the Evansville teams, I think, was in it. Uh, I'm drawing a blank on the rest right now, but, um, you know, some, some really good teams, you know, in the tournament and a, a team from Northwest Indiana, I can't, can't recall the, the post number or the name of that team, but, um, you know, we, we had some, uh, my brother told me when I first started coaching this team and first year I had it and we won a couple games in the state finals. He says, uh, I've been in this tournament many times. I don't care if you start out two and O or three and O he said, this is a tough team. It's, he goes, I don't care how good you are and who's here is this is a tough tournament to win. Yeah. And part of that has to do with the format of that tournament. It's not a true double elimination uh, format. If you'd have, you just have to get a, no one, no one, 
no one really likes this format. People complain about it all the time, but it is what it is. It's, it's American Legion's format, and that's what you're going to follow. Um, and uh, it's set up so that uh, no team plays another team twice until they absolutely have to. So it's not your true double elimination where you win a two or three games and then your winner's bracket and you wait for the you know, winner of the loser's bracket and then you play them. It doesn't quite work that way. And so it's, it's a tough – it's you know, we had to go – we went 5-0 and last year to win this thing. And uh, I, I'll tell you, we were fortunate to do so. Yeah. Uh, fortunate to go 5-0, and fortunate to win because we had a couple games that we were on the ropes and somehow pulled it out. Yep, and I'm I'm looking at the uh, the bracket right now, and you're right. You you've you've got Rockport, all, all the teams you're mentioning there. They're there again. Rockport, uh, Kokomo, Boonville, uh, Lafayette. You guys, Valpo. Um, you know th those are good size. And one of the things we were talking about offline was um, looking at those towns. So I'm looking at this list. You know, Rockport's a general a bigger area. Kokomo, Boonville, Lafayette, Terre Haute, Valpo. Those are that's not Indianapolis, but that size town, if, if I were to find a pattern, like you were saying, is those mid to small size towns um, that are pulling from a few schools, Legion's still going, you know, going strong. Maybe it not, maybe it wasn't what it was 20 years ago statewide. Um, but when you get to that, that core group of solid programs, it does lead to some solid baseball. So you, you win the regionals. And then, um, you know, pass or you win the, the state bracket and then you go on to the regionals. And you go to the Great Lakes Regional, which right. is also known as a national regional. So there are several national regionals. Well, there must be eight of those because I think the, the World Series tournament has the World Series has eight teams, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. I don't know from personal experience. I haven't been there yet. And we've only we've only been there as a program once in our history. 2006, my, we finished runner up with my brother's pro program at the time. but. Um, um, and then there've been, I don't know, at least two occasions where I know that we were runner up at the national regional. So one went away from the world series, but, um, so we've been there the last two years and back both years, we started out with a win. And then in, in 2018, we lost two one run games, our, our losses and, uh, our first loss in 2018, you know, here we were one and oh, we were playing Danville, Illinois, and we were very familiar with them. Uh, and you know, we, uh, we ended up with a home team. We had bases loaded, nobody out. And, and uh, we just needed to push a run across. And we made three straight outs. Yeah. We didn't put a ball in play. And, you know, so you know, they just – their pitcher came in and just did what he had to do. But, um, gosh, it was – I mean, I'll, I'll relive that game for a long time because I really felt like had we gotten by that – through that game, there's no telling what we could have done. But uh, – and then this past year, you know, we, we won our first one and, and then we just – Gosh, we just uh, didn't play well the next two games at all. So, you know, here we are back-to-back -back state champions, and we went to the National Regional one and two both years. And what I said after those games is, is like, you know, you're playing everybody state champion, unless you're playing the host, of course. Yeah. But you're playing everybody state champion, so no one is going to be a pushover. Mm -hmm. And whether it's whether the team's from Pennsylvania or Michigan or uh, Illinois or Wisconsin, I mean, you're playing everybody state champion, you know, and, uh, and they play like it. Yep. And, and one thing you were talking about earlier, um, and, and you're, you're preaching to the choir on this. I, I'm an advocate that the Indiana is absolutely a baseball state. And what a lot of people don't know is, you know, I've, I've been working on some things. I've, I've asked different people across the state, where is the heart of baseball in Indiana? Where is the capital of baseball in Indiana? Where is the soul of baseball in Indiana? Or where is the where is the biggest source of baseball history in Indiana? And that last one, the the source of baseball history, and really the the others as well. You got to put Terre Haute in that equation because not only because a lot of the talent that has came out of Terre Haute, um, you know, we were I'm just looking at your list right here. Some of the talent that's played for the American Legion program at Terre Haute. You're, you're looking at Tommy John, uh, Brian Dorsett, great court uh, catching career. Uh, Josh Fegley and A.J. Reed, two current guys in the bigs. But beyond just the, the talent that came from Terre Haute, the history of baseball in Terre Haute, right there, at uh, which is what is now the ISU football field, uh, used to host the uh, Terre Haute Hotians and, and all sorts of uh, minor league baseball uh, came and went right out there in Terre Haute. So, 
So really a, a, a big area that's rich in baseball history, but also rich in baseball talent. So I, I couldn't agree with you more uh, when you were talking about uh, one West Central Indiana, Terre Haute, Indiana, uh, being a, 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 a hotbed of baseball talent, but also the baseball history from that area, but also absolutely that Indiana is a baseball state. So coach, as we wrap things up here, I, I got a little game for you. We've been doing this with, uh, with all of our guests who have joined us today. We, we've had one person that got all five of them right. So, uh, and I, I got a feeling here that uh, you're gonna get these right too. Now, what we're doing is I am Hardy the Hat Guy, you know, obviously not a uh, professional interviewer, but uh, I know a little thing about hats or two. And I've got five hats and they're all from your area over there in West Central Indiana. They are all from your area over there in West Central Indiana, and we're going to see how many of the five that you can name. And I'll tell you from the outright, we're not going to make it this easy right here. Now, you're from Terre Haute, and obviously, I'm not going to give you ISU, Terre Haute North, Rose Holman, West Vigo, and Terre Haute South. That'd be an alley-oop uh, slam dunk that I'd be giving you. Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> uh, those hats there, uh, probably at least three of them I've actually worn. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll tell you. Uh, but the hats off to Coach Hannes right there. That ISU hat of the thousand hats I have, that might be my favorite hat in all of baseball right there. I yeah, think. yeah, I like the, the Royal and the Baby Blue together. Yeah. Pretty neat. And a good collection there across the board, to be honest with you. All right, all seriousness, here's hat number one. These are all West Central Indiana hats. Hat number one. Well, I'm going to have to go with Linton. I hope that's correct. I'm just, it's probably the one I'm here that I'm not real sure about, but I'm probably going to, I think I'm going to go with Linton. Yep, that is correct. You are one for one. That is the Linton Miners. Let's go to hat number two right there in the greater Terre Haute area. Yeah, that's that's well known to me, the South Vermilion Wildcats. Yeah, a little well known to me too. A little shameless plug there. That's my alma mater. And uh, right around the same area, hat number three. North Vermilion, in fact, uh, you know, uh, Don Corey was a good friend of mine. And, uh, you know, I know he coached up there for years and years and uh, uh, we miss Don every year on the baseball field uh, as an umpire. Yeah great guy I, I know him well from back in my playing days of course I got my, my good buddy uh, uh, Martin Brown is the athletic director there at uh, North Vermillion does a lot of work with the uh, IHSA as well does a really great job. You're, that's, uh, you're that's, on a that's roll a cool, here. That's a cool hat by the way that's it a real is, cool yeah, hat. Also, also one of my favorites now this is a new one this might be a little tricky but I, I, I doubt it's going to be tricky for you this is one of the newest schools in the state but right there around you. Well, yeah, I mean, I only probably get that because you're giving me the hint that it's a new one, but when I, that, that's Park Heritage, and that's the first time I've seen that hat, actually. Yeah, that is, uh, that's right, that is Park Heritage. That is the, uh, uh, a uh, combination of Rockville High School and Turkey Run merged, uh, I think it was last year, maybe the year before, the Timberwolves, I believe they are, uh, and that is their first year baseball hat right there. Well, they're going to be pretty one. good. Yeah, they are. They've got some talent there. Um, last one, another school right there close to you, especially close to Terre Haute North, right up the road. Also a neat design, the RP Riverton Park. And uh, as I said before we went online, I'm actually going to ha I had one Riverton Park kid play for me last year, catcher Pearson Barnes, and I'm going to have uh, two of his teammates joining us for this, uh, for this uh, summer. So looking forward to having those guys. Yeah, five for five. And I'll tell you, the Riverton Park, the, uh, their, their skipper there, Charlie Martin, this was actually when I, uh, when I started this Hardy the Hat Guy thing, in this high school challenge, this was hat number one. I knew I had to reach out to Charlie Martin. He is a baseball guy. I'm sure you know Charlie Martin, just a baseball family, a great guy. He's got a good program at a pretty small school there, but he's got a good thing going. Five for five, yeah. Coach. I, I knew that wouldn't be a challenge because uh, you are uh, you know baseball in that part of the state as good as anybody. It really was a pleasure having you on here because, uh, you know, Growing up in that part of the state myself, I, there was a little window of time where American Legion baseball wasn't available for me. Um, so I, I, I wasn't too privy to the American Legion experience, and you filled in all the holes here for me, and you, you confirmed something that I did know, and that is American Legion baseball, especially when you get to that state tournament. It is a, it is a high level of baseball. Big baseball fans like me, you, you've got to make it out to see some American Legion games because they're pulling from multiple schools. It's like an all-star tournament uh, every game, and so it's, uh, it's definitely high-level fun baseball to watch. Coach, best to you and your family. Oh, the, uh, the, we're in the 20s now. Best to the uh, Wayne Newton baseball family and all the area there in Terre Haute. Keep doing what you're doing. We love American Legion baseball, and it's at the level it is because of people like you. 
appreciate it. Thank you, Dan. Thanks for getting in touch with me. Enjoyed it very much.